In this video, I'm going to show you how to work a honeycomb. Now, this is a torsion honeycomb um, and it's worked as half stitch twist. Now, when you get a, a group of pins like this in this shape, this is what your honeycomb looks like. So whenever you um, get a pattern, now the old patterns may not have these lines drawn in, so it will look like this. And what honeycomb consists of, um, if we go down in this direction, you get a complete row where you've got every pin in the pinhole. Then the next row is what I call the alternate pins, because if you look, there, um, there's a pin missing from this point here. So you've got that one, then you miss one, then you've got another pin, miss a pin, pin, miss a pin, pin, miss a pin, pin. So what you're looking for is the group of six pinholes. So here, this is your group of six pinholes that makes the honeycomb. Now honeycomb is worked as half stitch twist, pin, half stitch twist traditionally. Um, or generally that's the general stitch you will use the reason you put the extra half um, the extra twist on your half stitch which means that when you look at your pair you will have two twists on them is because you're missing this pinhole in the middle normally when you do um, ground stitches you have a pin pinhole all the way down and you would also have pinholes here but because you're missing it, because what's going to happen is you're going to create a lovely oval hole. You need that extra twist to lengthen your stitches, because if you look here, this area from here to here is longer than this area here. So traditionally, if you were doing ground stitch, you would be working uh, that pinhole to that pinhole, then that one, and then you'd have this other one. But because you have this extra length here, that's why you need the extra twist. Uh, on all of my patterns, I draw the lines in because I think it helps give you a guide as to where your um, threads are going, because this, this bit here where you're... Uh, missing the hole can be quite tricky to actually see where your pairs are coming from but if you have a pattern like this you'll see you you've got one pin there then a pinhole here so you'll use those two to make that pinhole so let's see it in action so I've added all my pairs and I'm about to start my honeycomb I have to remember I'm doing honeycomb because at the moment I've been doing rose ground. So at the moment, all my pairs only have the one twist on because I've just done cloth stitch and twist to start my pricking. Now, I don't put an extra twist on these first ones because they're still going, they're going into my honeycomb. So I just have the one twist. So I'm going to do my half stitch, twist both pairs pin up and close that with a half stitch and twist both pairs. Now the first thing you will notice is that this stitch is wobbly. It's not going to tension up by any means until you've done a few more. So don't panic about tensioning that up because the minute you start pulling one pair, the other pair pulls open um, as you can see. So tensioning isn't going to be an issue now, the way I work my honeycomb is I always work down in rows. So um, I will go all the way down here. Then I will come and do what I call my alternate rows. And I, I will show you a little trick with that in a minute. So I'm going to go down this line to the next one. So I'm going to work my half stitch, twist, pin up when I find the pin. I've got bigger pinholes than my actual pins because um, uh, because I blew it up and then I close my pin with a half stitch and twist so you can see if I undo that I've got two twists on that pair and two twists on that one so now I'm going to bring in my orange so I'm going to do half stitch twist Pin up, close with a half stitch twist. Now straight away you will notice 
that none of my coloured pairs are travelling. So if you, I was just doing half stitch, the purple would travel down here. So this is great for um, if you want to keep your uh, colours in a particular order and not travel across your lace. So my next one, half stitch, twist, pin up, half stitch, twist. Bring in the next one, half stitch, twist. You're likely to find that you will end up saying half stitch twist in your sleep. So again, I'm angling my pins just slightly away from where my bobbins are. So my lace sits on my pillow. I've now reached the uh, bottom pin in this row. Now, if you're working all in the same colour, you can do it exactly as you wanted to, uh, as you have been doing it. Or if you're just using this as a single motive, you could do a cross stitch and twist, pin, cross stitch and twist. Or if you're in colour like I am and you want to keep your colours in the same position, you can work it like this. So I'm going to do a half stitch twist, pin up. I'm then going to close it with a cross stitch and twist. And then I'm going to put a second twist on because I want my purple to be on the outside. So let me just run through that with you again. So I've done a half stitch twist at the top, put the pin in. I'm now going to do a cross stitch and twist both pairs twice. Now this is going to give you a really solid edge. It is also going to manipulate the threads so they're in the right position. So if I want my coloured pink on the very edge I need to make sure that they're the left bobbin in my pair if you're doing it all in one colour you don't need to worry about any of this you can just do a cross stitch twist pin cross stitch twist pin so what's happened is that the end of this stitch here is also the top of this stitch so you're not going to do two half stitch twists you're just going to do close that pin, pin up because it's closing that pin and also making the top stitch for this one. Now, we're, because we want to manipulate our colours so they come all in one place, I'm going to put a cross stitch and twist my pairs twice so that my per pink bobbins are on the left. I'm then going to do a half stitch and twist both pairs and you can then see that my pink are back on the outside and my colored pairs are back on the inside and it's created this uh, lovely little plait appearance here so that's that pin there which is the edge one so i'm then going to move my pairs across because I'm going to show you that um, I this is my highest point. I know we've put that pin in now, but we were right on the edge. And these pins are actually independent of each other. So I'm going to start at this highest point and work down. And you'll see why they're independent of each other. So I'm going to work a half stitch twist. Pin up close with a half stitch twist so then normally you would work if you're doing ground stitch you would work your yellow and your purples together but there's no pinhole in the middle of this honeycomb so I don't need this purple one this purple one is going to go down that line here down this line to this pin and this pink will go although we haven't got a line drawn in there it's still running on the rules of your diagonal lines. So I'm going to ignore those two, bring in the next two, work a half stitch, twist, pin up, and close with a half stitch, twist. So again, my yellow is going to go down that line, and my green will go down that line. There's no pinhole in the middle, so I'm going to ignore those two, and take my next two, so the orange follows that line and my purple follows that line. 
half stitch twist pin up and close with a half stitch twist so that's all our what i call the alternate pins um, that's that row done so i'm going to move all my pairs across because now we do have to follow the normal rules of the highest pin so that's going to be this pin here and we'll work down this row here so i'm just going to show you that one so like i said we we haven't got a line drawn in but you still follow the rules that the pairs are still following their diagonal line so this one will be um here go to here so these lines are actually only showing you the six pins that will make up your honeycomb so that's one honeycomb and this is the second honeycomb so we're going to do our half stitch twist i've got a bobbin that's uh, tangled there so i'll have to sort that out pin up and close with a half stitch twist so now my purple is following that line straight down and my pink is following this line so we're going to go again half stitch twist pin so i'm just going to work down that bit and we now have our first complete honeycomb in and can you see this oval hole this is what we're aiming for lovely ovals now if you're working on a circle a circular um, prick in they won't be quite as um, oval because of the shape of the um, circular prick in but when you're working um, straight down like this you will get um, beautiful ovals like this so now you can see these pins here have now finally tensioned up here so this green one will now finally tension as we create our second oval Now, uh, the other thing to bear in mind also is that this, I've blown my pricking up to large and I'm not sure this thread is completely great for this size pricking. Um, but when you actually use the right thread, I wanted it blown up and in different colours so you could see and this is my only way of doing it. So I'm nearly reaching the bottom of this row. So I've just done that one. So now you can see I have three beautiful ovals here. So this pink one is on the end, so we can work it exactly as we did again. But now because I'm working in two colours and I want my pink on the outside, I'm going to do a half stitch twist, pin up, and close that with a cloth stitch and twist both pairs so that my pairs are split up which um, I know might panic some people but when we put this next pin in and do a half stitch twist our pairs are back together again and you've got this sort of candy striped here effect going on there so that's my edge one done so now I'm going to show you the beauty with this stitch so Normally, we would go back up to the highest point, which is this one, and work down. Now, because these pairs, as you saw in this previous alternate row, as I call it, is independent of all of them, they don't rely on a pair coming all the way down. So what we can do is, as we're working our way back up, because the next row down is every pin, we can put in this alternate row without having to do all the way down so i'm going to do half stitch twist pin up half stitch twist so as i showed you before we're going to completely ignore those two and take the next two and this is what i love about the honeycomb in the fact that you can work down and then back up the row half stitch twist which is one of the reasons i tend to work in rows so move those two to next two and those threads seem to be behaving themselves 
half stitch twist pin half stitch twist ignore those two next two and i'm just going to lengthen my orange and oh, they're stuck half stitch twist and then close that with a half stitch twist so as you can see We've not wasted moving our bobbins across. We've actually worked the next row. So we're now ready to come down this complete row here. Um, and we've moved all our bobbins across. So I'm now ready to come down this next row, but I'm going to do that in a minute. But before that, I'm going to put this pin in and then show you this side. So I'm going to do half stitch twist, pin up and close with a half stitch twist. Um, because don't forget your your diagonal lines can be worked in this direction but they can also be worked in this direction so that now gives me the green pair to work with the yellow so i'm going to do exactly the same as i did on the other side so i'm going to do a half stitch twist pin up do a cloth stitch twist both pairs twice so because I want my green on the inside, I'm then going to um, make sure that my greens are on the left and my yellows are on the right because the yellows are on the outside and the greens are on the inside. I've then put my pin in and then I'm going to close my pin with a half stitch twist. And then my green are staying in the same position and my yellow on the outside again. So I can now then go and finish off the rest of the design in the honeycomb and in the next video i will show you how to do a princess braid